Magandang araw sa ating lahat na nandito sa GSIS Museum. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagdalo sa aking lektura. And to all of you who are watching this uh, video, I greet you. Ciao! From uh, Manila, Philippines. I now greet the people who are watching us in the 5th European Assembly of the International Order of the Knights of Rizal. First of all, I would like to say that I am a proud member of the Order of the Knights of Rizal, just like you. And of course, we all love our national hero here, uh, our national hero, not that national hero, that national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal. Okay, so today, I would like to discuss first before we um, talk about Rizal the expat, the expat, who we are. Who are the Knights of Rizal? Well, first of all, some uh, uh, information about the beginnings of the Knights of Rizal. Uh, we were once called Caballeros de Rital. No? So basically, horse riders <laughs> of Rizal, or uh, Knights of Rizal, were established in December 30, on December 30, 1911, by Colonel Antonio C. Torres. Okay? And that's very literal, because the first Knights of Rizal were really horse riders. They were riding horses, roaming around, and proclaiming the heroism of Jose Rizal. Now, on December 30, 1912, one year after their uh, establishment as a group, the Caballeros de Rizal, with the Masons, spearheaded the burial of Jose Rizal's remains at the Luneta. Remember, Jose Rizal's remains were buried by the Spaniards without honor. Uh, the remains were dug up during the time of the Americans, and uh, it was not buried until 1912 by the order of the Knights of Rizal and the Masons. So this was Rizal uh, in a wake at the Marble Hall at the Ayuntamiento, the urn uh, there was guarded by the Knights and the Masons. And this was the procession that happened in the streets of Manila. No? Um, we, these are the Knights of Rizal in their old uniform. Uh, and uh, this was the actual burial by the Knights and the Masons. And uh, it was also attended by top officials during the American period. In, uh, so one year. After that burial, Jose Rizal's monument, which was built in Switzerland, called the Motostella, would, would be built on the site of the um, grave of Dr. Jose Rizal. So that is now, of course, known as the National uh, Cultural Landmark, uh, um, the National Monument of Dr. Jose Rizal at the Rizal Park, Luneta. On December 30, 2012, 100 years after the burial of Dr. Jose Rizal at the Luneta. The Supreme Council of the International Order of the Knights of Rizal and the Sucesos Chapter, where I am, of course, part of the Sucesos Chapter, reenacted the state funeral of Jose Rizal. So these are some of the scenes from the um, reenactment that was made 100 years after the event happened. On November 16, 1916, the Order of the Knights of Rizal was formally established. Okay? So that was only the formal establishment, but it has been there even before. Now, this is a picture of some of the early knights, including President Manuel Luis Quezon himself, when he was still uh, a politician. Um, on June 14, 1951, Congress granted the Order of the Knights of Rizal a legislative charter through Republic Act 646. And the date, June 14, uh, from then on, was celebrated as Charter Day. What does the law no, tell us about the Knights of Rizal? What should we be doing? To study the teachings of Dr. Jose Rizal, to inculcate and propagate them in and among all classes of the Filipino people, and by words and deeds, to exhort our citizenry to emulate and practice the examples and teachings of our national hero. As an explanatory note of the bill for RA 646 states, let Rizal's life and martyrdom influence and guide the destiny of the nation. Let these future generations live the Rizal way. So we, if we will promote the Rizal way, we as knights should 
be the first ones to study, to know, and to live the Rizal way, the Rizal spirit. We're already 102 years in existence, and so far, good news. We're going strong. We have new members of the Knights of Rizal. Many of them are also young people, vibrant, vigorous, and also we have been doing our share to alleviate the sufferings of our people. Through poverty, calamities, the Knights of Rizal are doing their best to lead the way in showing example, in trying to help as Rizal would have helped his countrymen. But also, what is remarkable about the Knights of Rizal is this, this, this used to be Indio guy who was executed by the Spaniards. His name is now the name of an organization with international membership and following. And uh, it's good to know that we have many members in Europe and also leaders Heads of states are happy to receive decorations and honors from the Knights of Rizal. If you don't know what's happening in other parts of the world, in Europe, for example, knighthood is a big thing for them. And being a Knights of Rizal, knowing what Rizal was all about, was a big thing for them. When they received the knighthood, they were crying. Diba? Eh, kung Pilipino ka, diba nakaka-proud yun? So, that's uh, the Knights of Rizal for you. The Knights of Rizal must be talking about Rizal, but let's admit it. Many times, especially the young people of today, they're so, um, what do you call this? Fixated with the Rizal issues. For example, probably his, his women. Is really a babaero? How many women did he have? No? Maraming hindi lang ang ginagawa nila. Huh? Or probably, was Rizal the father of Ad Adolf Hitler? Because probably they look alike and they have the same hair. Or was Rizal Jack the Ripper? Because when Jack the Ripper killings happened, Jose Rizal was there and they have the same initials. Jack the Ripper, JR. Huh? Or we are all fixated about his death that he had a very heroic death, that he had a remarkable death. But sometimes, yeah, Rizal dying is important. The death of Rizal inspired a lot of people to join the revolution that already started. But let me tell you this. Even if Rizal died the grand way, it would not be as important as the way he lived. Diba? He became a hero because of the way he lived, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, let's talk about Rizal, the expat, the, probably the aspect of Jose Rizal's life closest to ours. You know, we all know that Jose Rizal went to Europe, not for anything else, but for a mission that was given to him by Pasiano Rizal, which is to help in the propaganda movement, to help in asking for reforms for the Filipinos here in the Philippines. Remember that there were two Spains during Rizal's time. One is the Spain in Spain, where everything was liberal, and people had freedoms. People were free, and, and, there was, and people were progressive. But in the Philippines, the Spanish colony in the Philippines, it was not progressive. There was no freedom. People, are, people were in chains. And so this drawing was his last view of Manila. He knew he was going to miss it. He studied there all his life, and he had no digital camera, so he, he just drew it. And uh, it's a very emotional experience for him, perhaps. And also, Jose Rizal went to Spain to study medicine at the Universidad Central de Madrid. But also, he went to Paris to uh, study at uh, Dr. Louis de Vecker uh, ophthalmology. So he went there to in he, he went abroad to enrich himself while also you know, being with this group of people, the Illustrados, Indios who had the capacity, 
who were given a chance to study abroad and to be enlightened. That's why they were called illustrados. Okay? You see there, Jose Rizal, unmistakable one-sided emo hair. But who was with him? Del Pilar was there, followed suit uh, in uh, 1888. And Del Pilar, who is he? Well, he's the founder of Pringles. <laughs> Joke only. Here are the people, the group of people in Spain, writing, writing and lobbying with Congress, uh, with the Cortes of Spain, um, for reforms in the country. So these are a group of people who banded together with the same goal as uh, to free or to make things better for Filipinos. And so don't you think that that is what is also what we're doing in the Knights of Rizal? We band together to become followers of Rizal so that we can make the country better. I think we should always look at it this way. What we are doing is a continuation of the Katipunan and the propaganda movement. But we want to make things better for our countrymen. It's not all work, you know. Jose Rizal and his friends also you know, enjoyed themselves. So for example, this is a picture for the tableau of La Muerte de Cleopatra. Uh, Jose Rizal was actually wearing a funny Egyptian hat. Um, and who's there playing Cleopatra lying down there? Juan Luna. Also, we have here a picture of Rizal and his friends, Luna, Hidalgo, and Pablo de Tavera, on a picture frame, a blank picture frame, and they grouped themselves and had fun taking pictures of themselves there. And also, if, if, if the selfie was already there, they would have had selfies. Um, this is a picture of Jose Rizal with the Luna de Taveras, Luna Pablo de Taveras, I mean, and uh, they're having a, probably a lazy afternoon there, and also, here are they in a more formal picture. Jose Rizal's uh, probably the only smiling picture of Dr. Jose Rizal is here. And uh, the next picture is they're all wearing funny costumes and funny hats. Probably that's the very first cosplay. <laughs> um, not so many people know that Jose Rizal brought along his Babang Tagalog in Europe, and he was wearing it with the, uh, in the different uh, gatherings of the Filipinos in Europe. And uh, in this picture, this is a very funny picture, Jose Rizal with uh, Luna, uh, Pablo de Tavera, Luna, and uh, uh, Hidalgo talking to each other, um, having a discussion probably about the country at Luna's studio. And then suddenly what happens next? Um, they're all drunk, and Jose Rizal is throwing an apple to uh, Pablo de Tavera. So, <laughs> Um, maybe this is a stage photo, but this tells us that our heroes were not mere serious, you know, um, people. They also uh, wanted to have fun, just like us. And you have here uh, the Parisian life by Juan Luna. Rizal was sitting with Juan Luna there, and this is the uh, Parisian uh, lady you know, in the Parisian cafe. Now, um, recently, the Knights of Rizal in Europe organized the 2014 European Art Exhibit, uh, The Life of Dr. Jose Rizal in Europe International Painting Contest. And now we see, you know, as interpreted by different students and artists, uh, different uh, um, scenes in the life of Rizal. Rizal and his friendship with Ferdinand Blumentritt. Rizal in Berlin. Um, Rizal in Berlin publishing The Noli Me Tangere. Rizal in Switzerland. Rizal in Europe the cultures of Europe, and the like. Now, uh, there are many places that he visited in Europe. You have here Rizal in Italy. Okay? And in Italy, he went there in 1887. He went from Turin, Milan, Venice, Florence, Rome, Vatican City, and Naples. Uh, that's where he went. So he, he, he was happy to be in, in Italy. He wrote his father in a postcard about it. I was at Turin, my dear parents, I was at Turin, Milan, Venice, and Florence, and I have been here since some days ago. I have already visited St. John the Lateran, St. Clement, and the Roman Forum, the Capitol, the Colosseum, the Catacombs, the Palatine Hill, etc., etc. Today I'm going to visit the Vatican, taking advantage of the Feast of St. Peter and St. Paul. It's funny because, as you can see, in his letter to Blumentritt, parang, if you say it in Filipino, parang siyang silo, silaw. Huh? You don't, 
usually think of Jose Rizal as amazed, too amazed about something. But he, it happened in Italy. Uh, what happened in Italy? So here is Jose Rizal at the Roman Forum. <laughs> and this is the view of uh, the Vatican City as Rizal had seen it. And uh, he, this is Rizal talking to the Europeans. He said, I am in Europe. Everything I step on is the dust of heroes. Here I breathe the same air which the Roman heroes have breathed. I salute every statue with reverence, and to me, a humble native of a small island. It seems that I am in a sanctuary. I have already seen the Capitolium, the Tarpeian Rock, the Palatinum, the Forum Romanum, the Amphitheater, etc. Everything here is glorious. My favorite places are the Amphitheater and the Roman Forum. There I remain seated for hours, contemplating everything and restoring life to the ruins. I have also visited some churches and museums, like the Capitoline Museum and the Church of Santa Maria Maggiore, which is also grandiose. Uh, it's funny that probably some people say oh, Rizal was, had an insecurity because he felt big in Rome. But that is naturally, that is what you're going to feel when you're a Filipino in another land and you see these very historic places. This is what he wrote Blumentritt uh, when he was in Rome. I am tired as a dog, but I will sleep as a god. Uh, so he enjoyed everything that he was learning in Europe. And of course, Rizal has had a statue there at the um, Piazzale Manila uh, in Rome. Okay, now, it was not always good times because sometimes Rizal had no money, he had nothing to eat. So what did he do? There was a story that in a hotel, he would say, or in a hotel you know, where he was staying, he would say, you know, goodbye, I'm going to have some breakfast. And he goes back to the hotel, and he did not eat breakfast. He just walked around. And he would write to his brother that, you know, I have no money. And then, what happens? Pasiano Rizal will write to him, and will tell him that, you know, I'm sorry, sugar, sugar is not being bought here from other countries, and so I cannot send you any more money, or it's, there's difficulty sending money to you. So, please share the suffering of the whole family. So let's always think about this. When Rizal was in Europe, his life was not always happy. Hindi siya nagpakasarap doon. He worked for the Filipinos, and just like all of you, our family suffered too. We should credit the whole Rizal family for everything that Jose Rizal did for the country in Spain, in Italy, and in other places in Europe. But he realized soon that the battlefield is in the Philippines. So in a way, he became a balikbayan. He went back to the Philippines and organized something. According to Flora Kibuyan, this is what he wanted to establish to create the nation that he wanted to do. And what is that nation? This is where, this is the chair, this is probably the, the sofa set where Jose Rizal um, established the La Liga Filipina. That's why I'm so happy to sit there. Uh, and uh, this is, let's say, Bonifacio was one of the members of the Liga Filipina. And look at this. The end is to unite the whole, whole archipelago into one compact, vigorous, and homogeneous body. Okay? He would create the nation already. He did not say it. He did not say the nation, but to unite us, to become one nation. And how would we be? We will mutually protect each other. We will defend each other against all violence. We will study and encourage instruction and education, agriculture and commerce. We will help each other. It's like we must cooperate with each other if we want a country from the grassroots. But Rizal was arrested after three days. And Bonifacio moved to create the organization they've been planning for so long, the Katipunan. And while they were establishing the Katipunan, Jose Rizal was being brought to the Pitan, and that is where, despite the fact that the La Liga already was already dissolved, Jose Rizal still applied what he wanted to do to the country. The Pitan, when he went there, when he arrived, it was a very sad town. But what did he do? Well, first, he, he joined the lottery. He won 6,000 pesos. And what did he do with the 6,000? He bought a land. Well, 
and he, he, he practiced agriculture, made different houses. He's like a teacher because even the houses, they have shapes to teach you what is a quadrada, what is a redonda. Uh, he also established a hospital free for the people of the Pitan, for the poor people of the Pitan. Uh, and then he also established a school for the children of the Pitan. It's there. And also, he made the map, a relief map, always a teacher. He made a relief map of Mindanao at the plaza, which, of course, became the inspiration for the relief map of the Philippines at the Luneta. Also, he applied what he saw in Europe. He applied the things that he learned from the countries that he visited. For example, he built a dam in the Pitan. He also made a cooperative of Abaca the farmers of the Pitan. So he made the people, he became prosperous, but he also made the people's lives more prosperous, which tells us it's not bad to be rich. Share the wealth. This is a game that Jose Rizal made. It's called the Sibila Kumana. It's an oracle game. And he used recycled envelope from a New York um, factory, uh, from a New York mechanical factory. What does this mean? He wanted machineries. He was a, a um, Inquiring for machineries to be brought to the Pitan. Ganong katindi ang pagtulong ng taong ito. So he also, despite the fact that he had many things going there, he also sent different species of animals in the people of Europe. And this is very good because these were undiscovered species and Jose Rizal's name is already uh, uh, in this uh, uh, frog. You have the lizard there and the beetle. And also, he, he drew, drew the fishes of the Pitan. And this is funny because he wanted to teach the Pitanians to fish. Apparently, the sea was big, but there was nothing. No one wanted to fish. No one knew how to fish. And so Sevisal said, I'm going to teach you how to fish. And so he ordered some fish nets. When the fish nets arrived, when the fish nets arrived he suddenly realized when they were there, he did not know how to fish. And so, what did he do? He asked his sisters, you know, the next time you bring a net to me, bring also a fisherman so that they can teach us how to fish. All of that while having also a love life. Now, that's why when Jose Rizal left the Pitan, going to his death, the sad town of the Pitan was already happier. The people are more inspired to work. Their lives were richer because of Jose Rizal. And they were all crying when he left. The whole town said goodbye to him, laying funeral marches. Of course, in a few months, the nation will also say goodbye to him during his execution on December 30th of 1896. I believe that, that the Pitan time of Jose Rizal is the most neglected time of his life, but also the most important thing the most important part of his life because that is where he was able to create the concept of the nation that he wanted to have where people are cooperating with each other and helping each other and making each other's lives better. And I believe that we can consider Jose Rizal a one-man NGO, how one man can make a difference with other people. Jose Rizal once said, in the Philippines a century hence, with the new men that will spring from her bosom and the remembrance of the past. We, the new men, if we remember the past, she will perhaps enter openly the wide road of progress and all will joint, work jointly to strengthen the mother country at home as well as abroad with the same enthusiasm with which a young man returns to cultivate his father's farmland so long devastated and abandoned due to the negligence of those who had alienated it. And free once more, like the bird that leaves its cage, like the flower that blooms to the open air, we will recover our good old qualities which we are losing little by little. And again become lovers of peace, gay, lively, smiling, hospitable, and fearless. What's the meaning of this? What's the whole point? Result taught us, it is okay. It is okay to go out of the country. But we must give back. Go back to the bayan. Just like Rizal. 
because the country needs us. Kailangan tayo ni ng bayan.